This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. On the show today, you'll find out where book publishing is going and how to take advantage of it. How to identify and avoid publishing predators. What opportunities are emerging as the book trade evolves in new forms. How to avoid losing money and much, much more. Join us now as a variety of publishing pros will deliver insights and strategies to take the author to the next, next level of publishing. It's your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. Brought to you by Author You and The Book Shepherd. And now, here's your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Well, top of the day to everyone. I, I can't think of a better topic um, to really look at because it's, it's the core of your writing um, and it's your authoring and as your marketing goes forward and it's called creativeness and with us is we have an expert Jake Williams who knows more about being creative from a commercial standpoint literally where he was the creative director of the Denver Post here in Colorado. He also had his own advertising agency where he had to have the creative noodling going on all the time for his clients and not just the cookie cutter, this is what everyone's doing. He had to be visionary and move forward. And one of the things and how I first met Jake was actually at a function that we were both at and he said get up here and sit down and um, and let me look at you and he was doing caricatures of people he's got that gift where he can just see something and all of a sudden some feature of you is going to be expanded exaggerated uh, whether you like it or not so Jake is a creative person and you need to, as an author and as you're publishing and going along this journey you've got to have someone in there in your ear giving you kind of guidance and input. Now I know some of you really are creative. You can be it with your words, you can be it with your imagery. Um, what Jake does is combine the two. So with that, uh, let's welcome Jake Williams. He runs My Creative Journey um, in Colorado and he is his website is creativejourney.us.com and we're going to just kind of delve into what is being creative, what makes us creative, and how can you get your creative juices going when you're in a doldrum. So how's that for a start, Jake? Uh, that's wonderful. Thank you, Judith. I appreciate <laughs> you uh, with a wonderful introduction. Thank you. All right. So let's, let's get going. So let, let me just ask you off, the, off the, the top, what makes someone creative, and how come some people are as exciting as watching grass grow and others just have their grass growing in all kinds of different colors and sizes and shapes and all those things. Where does that come from? Well, sure, uh, I appreciate that as well. Um, one thing that I, I've always found is that uh, people are, as we grow up, we find that uh, uh, there's people that, that stifle our creative abilities by telling us that we can't do things. Uh, I, I think really looking at the passion to do things and the challenge uh, challenges of life uh, lets us connect to these things, and uh, our willpower has that ability to bring about any of these creative challenges that really blossom as we do it. Uh, it's it's just like um, in sports or in in any of the arts. Uh, it takes practice in order to to uh, develop these things, and that's it holds true with creativity as well. All right. So, is there is, is there something? I mean, I always talk about the muse. If people need to know what their muse is, because that's where that helps me go into a zone type thing where I can things can happen. And for me, it's water and having a little sunshine yes. um, in my midst. So, is there a is there some place that you tell people to go? Well, there are, there are many things. There's tools that we we uh, conjure up, as well as uh, uh, what people refer to as muses, as your water would be. Uh, uh, I I lock into many different things. I look for things that uh, 
create uh, a muse in itself that uh, you've got to listen to your uh, your heart and and uh, <clears throat> just what your mind brings about uh, to uh, uh, really make these things prosper and help develop that creative ability that we all have in us. Uh, exploiting, exploiting anyone's imagination through uh, ingenuity, innovation, and benefits, and uh, the originality that we have. Uh, we all have it. It's just letting it go. So the, the so the process of finding letting go. So when you and I met, um, and you were doing these caricatures, and have you always done that kind of thing? I've been doing caricatures since I was, oh, I would say five years old, and uh, Whoa. Uh, I, I've been, uh, I was I was a very lucky person. I, uh, I grew up in a family that was all creative, and uh, my father was a, a commercial artist, and what we used to do is uh, go up to the ski areas in Colorado and, and uh, sit and, and draw people, and uh, that's pretty much how I got started in the whole thing. Uh, I've made it a, a, a policy in my life that uh, uh, it's, it's one of these things that I really enjoy doing. And once I, um, I, I if I did it on a full-time basis, I, it would become a job. And I just never really wanted to make it a, a job uh, in general. So uh, caricatures are a fun thing. And... Uh, I think I've, I've kept it that way purposefully, you know. And and they are fun. I mean, I think they're great fun. And I know that you were at the extravaganza and you had a line waiting for yes. <laughs> you, you to, to, to get that going. Well, and, and All right. That's the the big part of it, too, is is the interaction uh, that, that I do with, with people. I, I find out an awful lot just by talking with people and... Uh, I, as you probably experienced yourself, we we had a fun time when when you sat down and and uh, talked about anything. Uh, you know, you can bring up anything, and um, you know that's another thing about creativity in general is is picking out uh, uh, some of the things in in life in general is is picking out mundane type things and and really uh, uh, making them fun. You know, it's uh, it, if you can do that. Uh, it, it not only makes life fun uh, it, overall, but uh, it, it's a very fun process if you utilize the creative process, and that's something that I do uh, in in uh, putting together a uh, creative journey uh, portion of my life. All right, so let's let's then start that creative journey, um, and on that, let's say an author. We could take different types of authors of. How, how would you, I mean, if, if you want to do this one, how, how would you maybe set a stage of someone who is deep, deep into suspense or mystery thrillers or, or horrors? What kind of things would they be, would you kind of be playing around with to kind of set up the stage that they could start extracting or pulling ideas or doing what ifs? And it even could be, you know, you need to go read something or view something or, you know, fill in the blank. What would you suggest? Um, sure. Um, well, one of the main things that I, I well, I, that I employ uh, as far as a tool is uh, I always keep, uh, some people call them uh, uh, journals or diaries, uh, whatever, very close at hand. I call it a jot doodle. And what I do is I, um, if I have something that I, I'm a task of some sort that I, I, I I'm having difficulty trying to um, bring about in a, in a fun way is what I do is I, I first of all, yeah, you can just take a piece of paper. In fact, you list the, the, um, the problem that you're having or the task uh, at the very top, and then you, you, at the very bottom of the page, what you do is you, uh, you, you see where the goal is that you want to achieve on that particular task. Then what I do is I break it back. I, I break it down backward, and uh, I will uh, take that task and uh, and um, employ all of that 
uh, uh, to how to get to that uh, purpose of or that goal in achieving it. And uh, that way, when you fill in the blanks, it's usually uh, you, you find that you can make it fun in each one of those steps in achieving what that mundane task can do, and uh, it's usually a, a very fun process in order to do that, and um, that's what I do with, with creativity in general. I, I, I do If I have to do things like, uh, well, let's say taxes, uh, you know, when, when you say taxes and doing taxes, uh, people normally just cringe at that type of thing, but if you actually take that and use that creative process, and, and list it and see what you've got to do and just uh, write out all the different things that you have to achieve uh, and reaching that goal to get that done, uh, sometimes you can fill in some really fun things on that type of thing. But you've got to, you've got to do it. You've got to experience it. You've got to interact. And uh, I, I, these are I don't think the- anyone thinks of doing taxes as fun. So <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> what, what are we going to do? I mean, there's creative accounting. And there's creative right. bookkeeping, <laughs> and that means called that's full blown manipulation in a lot of ways, um, sure. or relabeling. So how how would you? So that sounds more like what you're saying is how do you set yourself up so you don't you don't fall and get stuck in something that could be a tedious task. Exactly. Um, would that be right? You've have it. Yes, uh, you've got to have the right tools as well. Um, Uh, Once again, there's, uh, uh, you know, if if you can plot things and and do things to make the process and just go through each one of those little processes and enjoy it, uh, there's there's ways that you can, we all have that ability to to find a way to be creative in each one of those little things. Uh, I'll give you a good example. I I would rather, uh, I mean, with with a... um, my business plans, or when I was making business plans with my agency, I would uh, help people with their marketing uh, portion of their business plans, and we used to take this the same process and uh, go through it. And uh, if you outline all of that uh, and do that, it, it, it it's really becomes very inspiring. Um, there's um, okay, Jake. Let's hold on to, hold on to that, and let's come back to the process step by step. We have a quick break here. Okay. And then we'll come back and go through that kind of process. We're talking about creativity. How do you find it? How do you get it growing? And what happens when you get stuck so you can get it reduced? I'm Judith Riles. It's all for you, your guide to book publishing. This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these on the Rockstar Radio Network. Is there a book in you? Or another author you will show you how to create, develop, and publish your book without being good. If you already have a book out, You'll find a supportive and brainstorming community that's connected and creative no matter where you live. Author U brings in national experts for its book camps and annual author extravaganza held each May. It has regular meetings and delivers webinars for its members on timely topics. Through Author U's extensive network, members enjoy exclusive benefits, including significant discounts for a variety of services necessary to publish. The Resource, its online book publishing news magazine, is content-heavy and it's free. If you want to create a book that has pizzazz, punch, and panache, Author U is for you. If you're a hobbyist or a casual author, it's not. Join Author U today through its website at authoru.org. Follow Author U on Twitter at Author U and on Facebook at Author U, where timely author and publishing tips and articles are posted daily. Author U, where the author goes to become seriously successful. Every picture tells a story. And it's a truism that people do judge a book by its cover. Nick Selinger and NZ Graphics have been in the business of producing superior graphic cover design and interior layout for self-published authors, independent and traditional publishers for years. He has developed a reputation for... Excellent work, fast turnarounds, and best of all, affordable pricing. NZ Graphics also produces ebooks and 
book marketing materials such as posters, sell sheets, postcards, bookmarks, business cards, logos, and more. Books designed for his clients have won multiple book awards, including Best Book Award by U.S. Book News, multiple Evie Awards from the Colorado Independent Publishers Association, Indie Book Awards, the San Francisco Book Festival Award, and Freedom Medal Award from Valley Forge. Visit www.nzgraphics.com or call 303 985 4174 for more details about making your book the success it should be. Mention that you are an FOJ, friend of Judith's, and that you heard about NZ Graphics on your guide to book publishing. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. If you want to write and publish a book, if you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. All right, we're talking about creativity today, and it's really critical. Um, there are times that I, I know I personally have more ideas uh, than sometimes I know what to do with. Different ideas that I see something that triggers something, and other times it's like, my gosh, I'm so blank. Um, you know, where is it? So, how can you get those create, you know, juices going? How can you get be creative? and get creativity as part of your everyday area. Well, we have an expert, Jake Williams, who is was a former creative director of the Denver Post. He had his own ad agency, and he is the visionary behind My Creative Journey and also has his own book series that's going to be uh, developing off of that. So, Jake, you, you mentioned that you do what you call jot-doodling ideas um, when you're starting just, um, some people, I, I had a friend who used to call that the no integrity brainstorming, just get everything out <laughs> as, <laughs> as they, as they went through the process. And because somewhere in there is the gem somewhere in there, the gem will start evolving and surfacing and, and coming out. Um, and that and a lot of times you can do it with yourself, but you, sometimes you need some kind of a help whether it's another person or we talked about the muse. So what I'd love to do is you were talking about, um, before we went to break, some marketing, I think some marketing concepts you were doing, the creativity. So why don't we jump back to that and get in. You were giving an, ex- an, an example. Yes. There. Um, okay. There is uh, many things around us that uh, all the time that, that we can tap into. Um, uh, Creative blocks are are, uh, uh, one of the main things I think any author or anybody that's, that does things on a creative basis, but let's, let's stick with books in general. When you're writing, uh, there's that possibility that you're going to run into some type of a creative block just to elaborate on a point or, um, make the story, uh, uh, um, just profound in people. Um, uh, one thing that uh, you want to keep in in mind is is you look for the muse, and uh, the muse comes in in many different forms. Uh, it can be as with you, Judith. There's uh, that ability to find water and, and what it does for you. Um, uh, also, there's uh, people that you're talking to. You can just you can just listen and. and they, they may trigger something that uh, they're telling you, but it's it's all that ability to recognize the muse and and just be open to that type of uh, uh, inspiration that uh, helps you fulfill what you're trying to achieve with that creative process. And if you can uh, just pull. If you can just pull information from that, uh, you can achieve it. Uh, Judith, are you still there? I'm here. Keep going. Oh, okay. I, I for some reason, was uh, getting something here. But um, 
anyway, uh, it's it's that that thing that uh, you're taking out your jot doodle or your journal and in writing something completely different uh, that will help trigger things. Uh, you can um, uh, find different aspects of bringing about that muse and and talking with it. You might even find that you're you're talking to somebody in the past. You might even talk to uh, uh, Abe Lincoln or uh, <laughs> uh, you, you know that. that it's something that's, that makes it fun. Um, also, there are things that you can can do and keep in mind that uh, people love to to hear about drama or read about drama. If you can, cre- the more drama that you can create in any type of storyline, uh, the better things are going to be because it's just like talking in in general terms with anybody. You go to a, a social event. And you start talking with people. If you can create the drama, uh, I, I do that with caricatures. Uh, if you can throw in there's a little bit of drama on things, it, it makes it that much more fun. Oh, no, it does. That exaggeration that goes along. So I, I think yes. it's one thing that's really important for people to understand because sometimes I, I, we have all been in this situation that something just all of a sudden, an idea, uh, an answer, will just drop in that you have been looking for. Um, ju- it just drops in. Where you could be in the shower, you could be in the movies, you could be it, it, sitting at someone's house at dinner and there's some word triggers a slew of ideas that flow through and those creative juices start working on it. So what's one to do? I think it's a good idea. I mean, people all have their cell phones now with them. I mean, you could you could text yourself a quick note or you could do something. But I, I found that I carry just a, just, I've always got a, a, a little journal, a little pad of paper that I can scribble just a couple of notes to myself and come back to them because I almost guaranteed if you don't do it, it's, it's, it's almost like a flash. They disappear. Do you experience that, Jake? Have you ever had that happen? Very much so. Uh, it's, uh, those things, uh, um, uh, the more that you can surround yourself as well with, uh, just things to flavor, uh, that enjoyment of life, uh, that it, 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 it has that tendency of uh, taking on a, a very broad uh, and uh, a very, uh, well, it's, it's like painting. Uh, you, you have to take things in steps and uh, uh, do things in, in general that uh, you can't get it all at once. So you've got to take those little things and make them, they, you'll find that they will blossom on their own. And uh, if, if you can just write down a few things uh, that uh, you're trying to achieve there again, it it's, makes it that much easier to, uh, to get that inspiration uh, to finish that chapter or uh, bring about uh, another idea for the next chapter. Uh, but you can't do it all at once, so you, you've got to take a, and you, you take those baby steps, and uh, uh, eventually you start running. And uh, and when it really starts going, uh, you can't stop. <laughs> it's it's just one of those things that just it just goes and lets you uh, uh, nurture those things that uh, as they go along, and it just becomes easier. But you always are going to have those little creative blocks that will always stumble right into the thing, and you've just got to be—you got to welcome them in because uh, it, it's all part of the process. It was, so I guess it's important to understand. Then don't resist it; it happens. Number one, and sometimes yeah. you know I have to say this: that one of my favorite books was written by a guy by the name of George Leonard was the author. It was called Mastery, and I'm, I'm going to recommend it to all our listeners because it's one of those little short gems, you know, five by seven, really short, short. And I stumbled across it when I was working on my master's many years ago, my MBA, and it was required reading in the course. <clears throat> and he talked about he was a um, one of the martial arts, one of those, you know, black, multiple, gazillion black belt type people. But one of the things that he talked about is the extraordinary value of what being on a, for some people it's called stuck, but on a plateau. 
because it allows you to go back and renoodle and redo things and look at it. And all of a sudden, you know, everyone thinks they want to escalate in a process, a creative process, um, or a growth process for business, and they want to go from, you know, from point A, which is on the floor, to to the infinity, which takes you ongoing in this perpetual growth. And the reality is, in true life, nobody does that. You have ups and downs. Sometimes it's a real roller coaster ride, um, but rarely is it a level that you grow into Timbuktu land. And he talks about the true value of really how important it is to plateau at times. And sometimes even taking a step down backwards, there's a reassessment, you relearn, you do whatever, and then all of a sudden, boom! you accelerate where you're going. All the juices get going again. Has that been your experience? Very much so. Um, uh, developing those, uh, those powers that, are, that lay dormant inside of us yeah, sometimes is, um, is one of the hardest things that we think that is, is hard. Um, but to tap them and to, to get those to her along as a, a finely tuned engine is um, is really what your your ultimate goal is is to let those things really out and and to to let that creative juice so to speak uh, really start flowing and um, we can all do that we all have that ability. Uh, there again, as I say, there, there's all those influences that uh, keep uh, keep uh, tapping at us and and uh, telling us that we can't do things. And it, it, it's it's family, friends, uh, teachers that we've had, uh, or or whatever. Uh, there, there's people all around us, and it's usually because uh, uh, we we just uh, if, if you listen to these attributes, and these are some of the things that I have in, in, in my books, is uh, uh, there, there's the nemesis that I call them uh, that, that uh, have us or are constantly telling us that we can't do things. And uh, you've just got to be able to block those things out. And the more that you can do that, the better off you are because – uh, you've got, just got to let those things uh, go off your back. Just let them fall off your back and uh, you just keep moving forward with what you're doing. And All right, um, so hold that. We're going to come back and move forward with the next step outside of the nemesis. This is Judith Riles. It's all for you, your guide to book publishing. This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these on the Rockstar Radio Network. Since 1987, Color House Graphics has set the standard for quality book production. Whether you decide to print a small quantity of books or need a large print run, depend on Color House to help you. You'll receive professional help and advice the moment you reach one of our representatives. If you mention hearing about us on your guide to book publishing, Judith Bryles, we will provide you a discount on the first order you place. To speak with a project manager, call us toll-free at 800-454-1916 or visit us at www.colorhousegraphics.com. When Ned Thompson and Harry Shore started Thompson Shore in 1972, they believed employees with great character would make up the best company. They were right. They hired people who were not only experts in bookmaking, but who were obsessed with quality and delivering exceptional customer service. Almost 40 years later, Thompson Shore remains a 100% employee-owned company. Ned and Harry knew that successful customer projects are a direct result of empowered employees. We specialize in all books for large and small publishers. Creating beautiful and well-made books, we're dedicated to pleasing our customers by making the experience a good one from start to finish. The personal touch we have with our customers allows us to be innovative in solving their most difficult challenges. 
Our platform also ensures that we can remain flexible to meet our customers' unique needs and expectations. Our marketing kit can create buzz for your title, enhancing the promotion of your book during infancy. When you need to test the market to gauge your future sales, we can provide digitally printed books that will transition seamlessly into a larger offset run. From ebook to hard copy to delivery, our skillful customer service teams are at the ready to answer your most pressing question. At Thompson Shore, we know that making the highest quality books requires more than just best technologies. It requires superior customer service, professionalism to the trade, and commitment to environmental and social values. With these standards of excellence in place, you can be sure that we will always help you put your best book forward. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. Coming up, you'll hear more about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Okay, we're talking creativity today. And my guest is Jake Williams. He is the founder of My Creative Journey. Uh, you can find the creativejourney.com. Is that correct? Is that the website, Jake? Yes. Creativejourney.com. And his phone number is 303-949-0662. But we're really talking about this. There's Creativity is not just in the writing when you're first starting. It's got to be ongoing, and it's going to encompass your marketing as you come out, as well as other things, and even it could involve what we call repurposing um, us in publishing land, where we take what we've already done, and how can we bring new juice to it, or is there a new life to it, or is it really um, past its sell-by date, and does it need to come back and, and be revisited? So what I wanted Jake to do is this, let's talk about the writing process. I'm going to share experience I actually had yesterday because it came from one a conference call I had with my colleagues as we set up our next Publishing at Sea conference, um, which is going to be a full week in January 18th um, that we're doing and setting up the full agenda and how we're going to lay out the roadmap um, for how to navigate the high seas of publishing. And that all of a sudden it dawned on me, you know, I've already written this timeline. I, I already did this. But it forced me to go back in to look what I did. Ugh, I need to add here. I need to do this. But just one, one phone call created a whole new journey. And guess what? I've already outlined a new book that I'm going to do next month. Just from that one goose of a phone, uh, you know, of a conference call with my colleagues. Um, that will take it into that area, and I've actually never done a radio show on that. So I guess if Eric, my producer, is listening in, we need to set that up because we need to do that. The timelines of what you do step by step, eight months in front of even having a book in hand are critical for its success. So we're going to do that. All right, so back to you, Jake. We're writing. We're writing. What do we need to be doing to make sure we keep ourselves writing? Uh, one of the things that um, I think is very important for any author uh, or aspiring author uh, to do is to, um, uh, when you're approaching that book, uh, think in terms of uh, the big picture and uh be as gigantic as you possibly can on on what you want to achieve with the whole thing, and, and sit down and, and as I say, t you can either do it with your uh, journal or dot jot doodle, and uh, you sit down and just um, start listing some of the things that you want to achieve it, with this book, and you can be as broad as you want, be as ridiculous as you as you can. Um, and list all those things out. Uh, take, uh, take it to a whole different level, and you'll find that just writing the book becomes a, a very small part of it, and it makes it that much easier to accomplish once you see the, the, the broad picture. 
And uh, you can paint that whole thing in your mind as well as on a piece of paper if you take that approach. Now, um, I'll give you a good example of that is that when I did my creative journey process, um, originally it started out to be a radio show. And uh, what I wanted to do with that was bring about uh, the characters that, that I have in general, and I listed all the characters that I wanted, and I started in with that type of thing. Then I, I took the approach of making it into a motion picture, and uh, that was another portion of things that uh, was fun that, that made it uh, even better. And then I took it on a television series and uh, started writing episodes of that. And, and now uh, what I'm doing is I'm taking all of those scripts from not only the, the radio shows and the television and the, the motion picture and trans, transposing them into uh, these stories that i am uh, made in uh, the Creative Journey series. And uh, that's how I'm getting to what I'm doing now is writing these books and I'm illustrating as I'm doing them, and uh, it, it's it's just a delightful way for me to uh, accomplish what I had originally set out through the radio aspect of things. Okay, so when you're do when you're um, uh, doing that, when you are uh, in the process, and you're doing what you know that repurpose word that I do, or all of a sudden you've got a new idea and you're taking it there. So you've got the gift also of illustrating. I've seen your illustrations, you know, besides the caricatures, although some of them are little, have caricatures to them. The illustrations, a lot of us don't have that gift of a true artist and an illustration that we do with that. Do you think it's a good idea to use illustrations throughout in books, or is that just for kids? What do you think? Um, well, for me it is. Uh, uh, you know, there again, it, it's, it's how you want to uh, interpret your thought process down and, and uh, uh, create that, uh, that portion of you that, that you're putting into the book uh, or the, the piece that you're trying to achieve. Um, it, you want to leave your mark. Uh, you want to tell people what, what it is that you are, and uh, you may change your, your whole uh, thought process just by laying it down on a piece of paper. And, um, yes, I, I have one of those abilities where I, I feel it's, it's necessary for me to illustrate it. Uh, I, I look at it. I used to do storyboards for uh, uh, commercials and uh, uh, just for uh, television shows as well as um, uh, movies. And it... it those type of things are, are very important to for the director. Those are very important things for uh, publishers and things like that to get the overall picture of what you're trying to do. And I feel uh, just on my own terms, that's the way for me to represent things is to uh, present. Okay. Well, that sound, I think that's a great idea. I mean, I'm... Um, it, it's just that, you know, here's the creative side coming in. I, I just shared with you um, that maybe I should be doing a show on the timelines. Okay, I'm already going to set that up because they are really critical. And although I go through it with all my clients and I give them a book and here's this in the chapter, do they eat, read it? I don't know. But it's really critical to understand that there is publishing is not something you do. Um, in a month's period of time. If, if, you, if you think that that's going to happen, you're going to set yourself up for failure. And I think what you're talking about, Jake, is the same thing with creativeness, that you've got to allow yourself time to let it morph. Um, if, if you put a deadline saying, okay, it's, uh, it's uh, right now it's uh, 4.45 in the afternoon and I've got 15 minutes to be creative, let it flow. doesn't work that way, right? Right. Uh, there's uh, you you uh, sometimes there's there's uh, the value of pressure, but uh, uh, let me tell you that the if you really want it to be uh, uh, just very original, 
uh, you've got to let that you've, you've got to let it develop. And um, most people uh, feel that, especially when they're dealing with creative people, uh, if, if you give them a deadline, then they'll reach that deadline, and uh, that's that's it. Uh, but um, and some people feel that, that they need to have that deadline uh, placed upon them. But uh, I, I personally feel that uh, you know you you do have to have the time in order to to let those creative juices flow. And um, I, I think it's very important. Yes. But find the but find those places that will help um, be instrumental in that doing it. I mean that's a critical thing. That goes back to your muse issues. Yes. Yes. Uh, okay. The, 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 yes. So when you're doing that, is that we're we're gonna we're coming up with uh, we're gonna be coming in with our last break. What I would love to do is that if you were advising someone in in setting up when we come back from our from the next break, we've got two minutes. We go to it, but I, I want you to start. Let's start the process now. But if you were going into creating a marketing campaign. Not saying that you know your expertise is marketing, so to speak, but you and I have talked about marketing enough that yes. that you're going to set up a marketing campaign that has something, whether it needs to be quirky or whimsical or something to get their attention. For example, you and I are both from Colorado, and we had a a a guy who started off as owning a microbrewery downtown, and then in Denver, and then he ended up. Kind of, I don't think he ever expected to run for mayor, but he ended up being propelled into that. And he brought in his his campaigns were very creative. People always said they're very creative, they're quirky. He did oddball commercials, and he became mayor of Denver. Now John Hickenlooper is the governor of the state, and they're talking about him. Is he now building his platform to be, you know, to make a run for president? in the next sometime within the next eight years, next four years, fill in the blank. And that it was his the really his the quirkiness and the oddballness that he did that got people's attention that said he's different. So is being creative being different or taking something that is known and just giving it a twist? I think so. I think that that's the most important part of being creative. Uh, uh, you always hear the term that. Uh, Which part, being quirky uh, or giving it a twist? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, with that, I, you're going to come I, back I, and answer that, Jake Williams, <laughs> of my creative journey. <laughs> we're we're going to have our final break, but I really want to do set up a stand. Okay, here's how we're going to start marketing using creativeness so you can get go stand apart from your competitors, and then soar above the clouds. This is Judith Browse. It's off of you, your guide to book publishing. This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these on the Rockstar Radio Network. Book shepherding concept is simple. The publishing world is changing, and so must you. You need an experienced shepherd and a guide to partner with you as you create, strategize, develop, publish, and achieve your publishing goals. You can't do it alone without paying the price. You can spend your money creating a book that turns out to be so-so, or you can create a book that looks and feels classy, builds your brand, and is a financial success, a bestseller. It's your choice. You choose. You need the book shepherd. Publishing is riddled with obstacles, sometimes nightmares for the author. You don't need problems, you want solutions. Dr. Judith Bryles will shepherd you through the maze and the chaos. At times, she's had to step in and rescue a book, a book that has been sabotaged by a publisher or by a publishing service provider or sometimes even the author themselves. Judith Bryles is the book shepherd. If you want to create a book with no regrets, give her a call today, 303 303- 885-2207. That's 303-885-2207. Or email her at Judith at Bryles.com. By the way, Bryles is spelled B-R-I-L-E-S. Follow Judith on Twitter at My Book Shepherd and on Facebook at The Book Shepherd.
At Total Printing Systems, customer service is our priority. We are located in Southern Illinois. Our employees have an average of 18 years experience and know that customer relationships are important to our continued success. We have been a short-run book printer for nearly 40 years and always stay at the forefront of technology. Our niche is from 1 to 5,000 copies. Today, we offer digital black and white and four-color high-speed inkjet printing, a cost-effective way to introduce color into your short-run titles. We, of course, offer traditional offset printing as well. Bindery is done in-house, from adhesive case binding to PUR perfect binding to mechanical binding of all types, including side sewing. We provide warehousing, kitting, distribution, inventory management, a new print-on-demand facility, streaming browser-based ebooks, and bookstore. Call us at 1-800-465-5200 for a quote on your next book project. You can also visit our website at www.tps1.com. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. If you want to write and publish a book... If you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. All right, so we're back for our final segment with Jake Williams. He's a creative director, formerly with the Denver Post. He does phenomenal caricatures, um, and he is the spearheading the My Creative Journey, as well as creating the Creative Journey series. But it's all about um, finding not only your inner muse, but taking that into the outer side and really morphing it and really bringing it about so that your stuff is juicy and comes alive. And what I wanted to do was to come up with a really strong point of that books in hand, whether you did a print on demand, whether you've got a full blown run, whether you're doing an ebook, an audio book, or whatever, what can we do, Jay, to set ourselves apart from being different? From I mean being really different, that we aren't like every other author who's in my genre. What are the steps that you would recommend that we start to put that journey together? Uh, that's that's one of the hardest things I think that uh, any of us have is is reaching our own identity. And uh, uh, there again, it's it's easy uh, if if you you have fun or take the approach of having fun and doing it. And the way that uh, I found that. Uh, it makes me creative is by uh, taking a good look at the uh, overall product, project and seeing how uh, what the goal is that I'm trying to achieve. That way I can list things that are um, a part of me and uh, how I am going to accomplish that goal uh, and, and taking each step-by-step portion of things uh, in attaining that ultimate goal, uh, there's um, there's a lot of fun that you can do with that because once you put down an idea uh, of what you're doing, just have fun with that particular thing that you've just written down. Uh, each and every one of us has that ability, and if if we reach inside ourselves or look inside ourselves and see what it is that uh, is is a portion of us that that reflects back out onto uh, that project in general. So uh, your marketing is is really an, an elaboration of uh, of what your abilities are, and take those uh, and have fun with each and every one of them. It, it doesn't have to come off originally or uh, from the start as being fun. Uh, just list these things that you're trying to accomplish and, and just over, oversee that portion of things because you're in control. You're, you're the one that's going to get that done. And in order to get that achieved, uh, you, you need to have that starting point. And uh, each of us have that, that portion of us uh, in each and every one of us to get those accomplished. So, uh, as I say, you just uh, just take one sheet of paper and uh, start listing things that you want to accomplish, and you'll see those things start flowing out and um, 
and you'll get that accomplished. All right, so if you're doing marketing, let's think of marketing, do we check out what our competitors are doing their marketing, or does that compromise um, your own creativity? Um, I, I, maybe there's two ways to look at this, but what do you think? Um, I, for me, it is. It, uh, any time that I've, I illustrate or do anything, you're looking for your own technique and your style. And uh, for me, when I look at other people's things, it, it compromises what I'm trying to do because then uh, it, it's, it's held there in the back of your mind what, uh, what they're doing. And to be original, you've got to really and truly look inside yourself in order to do that. So I, I have, um, uh, when I take that approach, I do not uh, look at what the competitors are doing or anything else because that has a tendency of, of plagiarizing whatever they're doing. And um, I, I prefer, I, when I see something fun and that somebody else is doing, uh, I, I almost uh, uh, immediately look at it and say, gee, how would I do that differently? And um, uh, it, I think that's a good way to, to look at anything that you're doing in life anyway is just uh, – you know, what is you? What is, what is it that, that you do better than anybody else? And um, uh, you can take any portion of life and, and do that. And, and if, if you have fun at it, it, uh, it, it's like sitting at the airport and just watching people. Uh, you, you can identify with uh, certain situations. And, and if, 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 if you take that in general in life and, and have fun with it, uh, uh, you'll find that your marketing and or whatever project that you're doing, uh, that just becomes a part of your life, and it becomes you. And I think that's the important thing that any of us need to do is make anything, uh, especially your marketing, you. And uh, um, I'm sure you know that as well, Judith. When, whenever you do anything, uh, it's, it becomes you. And um, I, I don't know if, if, if you look at other people and uh, 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 their projects or whether it's the competition or whatever, uh, you know, it's um, to me, it, it, I think it's very important to take all of, uh, all of my creativity and, and bring it out. And the way I do that is I list it and, and just look at my muse and uh, whatever it may be, and and look at it from that creative process. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, maybe that maybe we should look at this other way. I I think that sometimes we, if you're thinking about marketing, and and product development, it makes sense to look at other stuff that catches your fancy, and and what caught you, and can you then take that and work with someone and morph it. Um, that might work for you. What do you think of that idea? I mean, we, we all don't have all these original ideas, let's face it. <laughs> there's, there's some people right. who are very creative. They come up with things. Yes. Uh, you know, with the, uh, you hear the term all the time, uh, uh, everything has already been invented and, and uh, we're just, uh, uh, just making it better. Um, uh, from our approach, but there still is originality, and if, if you really take a good look at it, that's why it's good to write it down and uh, and and oversee that process so that it becomes more of you. And uh, uh, to make totally original can be difficult, and uh, we just have to accept the fact that uh, you know if, if we bounce it off of enough people, uh, we can we can find out you know. That, that feedback that is important um, to uh, to make it become more and more of an original idea, but um, don't be afraid to just write down anything and have fun with it once you once you've got it down. It's uh, um, I think that's the most important part of any of it uh, is just to have fun. Uh, well, well no, you know, Jake, that goes back to my comment where I said earlier in the show that low integrity brainstorming. Sometimes yeah. those off the wall ideas that just come out may be that little gem in the in buried in the middle of all this that could come forward, and uh, and be this thing that 
it erupts and takes you to whatever that next level is. Yes. Um, I, I think that that brainstorming is, is all a part of it. And that's uh, when you can do that on your own, it's great. But a lot of times the brainstorming has to be done with other people. And when you bring that in, it's, it's good to get the feedback. But um, if you want it to be totally original, it's, I think it's very important to do it on your own first and then uh, run it past other people uh, on, a, on a later aspect of things because uh, uh, at least give it uh, a little bit of bullet points or something that you can, can springboard from because uh, marketing can be very difficult. And if, if, if you come across as it being a fun type of thing, I think people all of a sudden see that fun and uh, – can make that uh, application to their own life uh, that much easier. Uh, if you keep it really drab and mundane, uh, it's it's going to come across as that. And uh, uh, you've got to create the drama uh, of the fun. And I know that's uh, kind of an oxymoron, but uh, <laughs> at the same time, uh, there is a certain amount that we look for in anything that we do that we have to create that drama, and you, you find that in your book in general. And you see uh, movie trailers and things, they, they more than, than uh, any time they do movie trailers or anything to pull you in, uh, they show you a little bit of drama and a little bit of fun at the same time. And that's what pulls you into anything. So uh, when you're marketing anything, um, you, you've got to create fun for people to see. Well, that, I think that kind of brings a nice summing up. <laughs> Drama <laughs> and fun. Um, a little different. I know that, you know, when I redid The Morphine of Author You, and, for, you know, I'm very excited because Author You creating and building your author and book platforms just pulled down the Book of the Year tabs for writing from uh, the Indie Fab Awards that was announced at the American Library Association with four words, which, which is quite a feather in our cap. And that book went through morphing. I mean, it was, I was sitting in a meeting, I was just listening, and all of a sudden, bang, an idea popped in, and the what if started in my head. And I came back and called my designer. This book had already been totally laid out. Totally, it was done. Done, 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 done. And I just said to Nick, I have an idea. Would you listen to me just for a couple of minutes? And he was just dead silence. And then he said, you're right, it will work. And we totally gutted that book, and we put it back together. Um, and it came out to be something that I never imagined in the first place, but I was open to that serendipity. And I think creativity and serendipity, we haven't used that word, really do go hand in hand. I agree. That's it. Are that? That's yeah. Okay. Well, let's do a quick wrap up. Thank you, Jake Williams. My Creative Journey um, is his company, creativejourney.com. And he's got a long pedigree dealing with, with marketing and creating copy, as well as just coming up with stellar ideas. So thank you for being with us. Um, we're going to be doing a variety of things. I want to encourage all of you to go to the publishing at sea.com uh, and join us January 18th, the fantastic lure of the seas. We're going to show you how to navigate the high seas of publishing and create, come out with how to create that bestseller, including being creative along the way. Um, so here we go. I'm Judith Riles. It's Author You, Your Guide to Book Publishing. Jake is certainly part of our team. And watch, we're going to have huge announcements coming along, um, really, in the fall of 2014 that you don't want to miss um, for the author journey. So with that, Jake, thanks for being with me. Thank you, Judith. Okay, take care.